Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, the adventures of craft beer and baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 15 for August 11th, 2020. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. We'd always appreciate it if you subscribe and turn on notifications. Uh, and this is gone for 15 weeks. Actually, we had a pilot episode, so 16 weeks. We are ecstatic to come to you every week and talk about beer and baseball. So let me switch the uh, screen configuration here and uh, let's go to our lineup card. Uh, first up is Angelo Trinidad, who uh, didn't get his um, minor league ballparks into me. Um, Angelo, how many minor league ballparks have you been to, both current and retired? Uh, two. So one, one retired, one current. Uh, the current one is Storm Stadium for the Lake Elsinore Storm, and the retired one is Billy Hebert Field for the Stockton Ports. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, welcome, and we're always glad to have you here. Next up is Kevin Lyon. Uh, fun fact, has been to 28 minor league uh, baseball parks, 19 current, 9 retired. That's impressive. Now, I just realized the way he said that, I went to Stockton about 20 years or so ago, so I think that would have been the old ballpark, right? Yep, that's correct. So I guess it technically is 18 current and 10 retired. Oh, well, I, I need to up. I can't update in real time, but I, I will definitely <laughs> update what? that. I mean, it took, it took, I mean, I'm sure I might have forgot a stadium because I was like just going through every single team I could think of. Yeah, a lot of traveling over the years. Yeah, and uh, you did a lot of your traveling beforehand. So I, I'm Michael Mondragon. Uh, I have been to 26 minor league ballparks, 25 current, uh, only one retired, uh, which was the High Desert. Um, oh, yes. Uh, when we went to go yes. see the High Desert Mavericks, which uh, you're wearing the hat right there. Yeah, Very nicely done. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've only done my uh, a lot of my minor league baseball parks like within the last – like five or six years. So I've really tallied up a whole bunch. I'm supposed to be able to see a lot this year as well. Yeah. In fact, uh, some new ones, I was going to go to uh, Wichita and uh, what was another one I was going to go to? Um, uh, I was going to go to Myrtle beach this year. That's not a new one, but I was going to try to go there as well. Um, all right. So let's get into it. Angelo Trinidad. Actually, let's start out with Kevin. Kevin, yes. what are you drinking and what are you wearing today? Oh, okay. Um, before we start, I want, I want I'm going to go off subject really quick um, because we didn't have a card for this, but we wanted to talk about um, a group that's really important to Michael and I based out of Pasadena. It's called the Baseball Reliquary, and the founder, Terry Cannon, passed away of cancer recently, and so it's a little tribute to him because him and I are both members, and I know we talked about at length at a great show. Uh, we talked about the length, about everything involving them. Every year, they have a a thing called the Shrine of the Internals. And this year it's supposed to be, I believe, Bob Costas, Max Packin, and I'm really, I'm spacing out who the other person is right now. Um, oh, Rube Walker, is that was that the name of the person yes. who was behind the initial uh, Ningle League of Baseball? So every year they start the ceremony off ringing a cowbell in tribute to Hilda Chester, who was like a super fan for the Brooklyn Dodgers throughout like 30s, 40s, and 50s. So they always started off by ringing the bell. So I want to get, and I hopefully you have, I don't know if you have your bell handy. We want to ring the bell in honor of Terry Cannon. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Maybe they have the bell or the virtual bell. All right. Thank you. It usually goes a little longer than that, but that's how the, the ceremony always starts every year for the annual Shroud of the Eternals in Pasadena every July. They do it the Sunday after the All-Star break. I was not this year. I don't know what's going to happen yet because they were going to plan on doing like two ceremonies in one next year. But obviously with him passing away, we'll see what happens in the future of that organization. But it's one that Michael and I have been supporting for a number of years. So yeah. I want to start off by mentioning that. Thank yeah, you for not, that. Not only did we lose the Shrine of the Eternals, um, uh, ceremony this year we lost terry which is a yeah. huge blow to uh the baseball community so we yeah. were all really taken back by that so uh yeah. rest in yeah. there's a beautiful piece of, there's actually a really nice obituary the new york times actually wrote an obituary about him yeah we'll, we'll definitely share that because uh definitely yeah. people need to know that his name and it, it's really um it's close to our heart because uh yeah. kevin kind of brought it into my life and it's um yeah it was it was really tragic so thanks yeah. for uh, saying that, Kevin. So let's uh, let's have a cheers for Terry. Let's have a cheers for Terry. 
uh, with Cheers. some El Segundo Brewing. Yeah, so uh, my growler pickup this week from Red Beard Tap Room Anaheim. This is called Smooth Deep Blues at the 6.8% ABV, ABV ugh, uh, IPA. Haven't tried this yet. I'm getting ready to now. As the joke is, I'm drinking out of a jug now weekly on the show. <laughs> but I went over there on Sunday and they said, oh, yeah, you'll like this one. So I'm like, okay, I'll take it. So let's see. Cheers, everyone. Cheers to Cheers. Terry. Here. Yeah, cheers to Terry. So Very it's good. a it's a West Coast IPA. I couldn't find out a lot of information about this because I think I don't think they have it in cans. I think they only do are doing growlers potentially. Okay, they must be just on draft over at the actual place, you know. But yeah, again, it, it, we talked about this before. Some places had difficulty doing bottling and canning, yeah, because of the pandemic. You know, the one we talked about most famously was that uh, the Tony Gwynn Hazy three ninety four. Like they planned on releasing that on draft everywhere and then they couldn't so they had to can it and it got really limited because of that and that could be right. happening like, industry-wide yep so 6.8 abv um strata citra and amarillo hop so am, i i i would love to have one of those yeah it's a nice this wouldn't be angelo's kind of ipa probably it's a little hoppy but it's good and uh today i'm i'm actually two retired teams i didn't mm -hmm. get to go to the albuquerque dukes but i did go to the high desert mavericks who finished their franchise history by winning the Cal California League Championship, which Michael and I were at. Yep. And then this, so the Albuquerque Dukes was the AAA Dodgers team for, my goodness, like decades. Yep. You know, when like Oral Hershiser played there and many, many great Dodgers played there over the years. Yep. But I got this from Michael because there actually is an Albuquerque Dukes store in Albuquerque. Yep. And I wish I would have known about this because I was there two years ago and I caught an Isotopes game, a.k.a. They were doing the uh, Los Mariachis that day. That's right. I, but I was if I would have known about this store, I would have totally checked it out. So thank you, Michael, for this. Yeah, and you can watch that uh, if you uh, look in our video archives. Uh, look for the Colorado video, and I actually mm -hmm. make uh, uh, a sweep down to New Mexico. Even though it's Colorado video, I, I got down to Al Albuquerque. So yeah. uh, that I went to that store. Uh, That's so a really nice drive from Denver. Yeah, ch check that out. All right, Angelo, you're up. All right, so tonight I am drinking Firestone Walker Brewing Company's a Mind Haze IPA. So this is 6.2 ABV with a 40 IBU. Um, the description uh, calls it a, an Im imaginative array of tropical hop flavors. Nice. So uh, it's very, uh, it, it is very citrusy, uh, very tropical, and, and quite refreshing actually. So uh, right around um, probably the the peak of what uh, my tolerance with IBU would be currently. So yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we'll build it up. We we will slowly build it up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? A, it, in the summer heat. You know, the lower AB, the lower IBUs is all right. <laughs> yeah, yep. for sure, for sure. And uh, we'll, it's a two year process. We'll get you up there, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm wearing uh, today. I'm wearing a new shirt from Baseballism. This is the Around the Horn uh, Strikeout T-shirt. Cool. They have two variations of this. There's the Around the Horn um, ground out uh, t-shirt that's in a gray instead of a navy. So they have a great sale going on right now. Uh, it's called uh, their Hat to School sale. So they're giving away a free hat uh, with every $50 purchase. Uh, the hat's pretty cool, so I may have to make another purchase. But it's uh, the, the hat is um, it has a little uh, slot on the side here to put a pen or a pencil. It's kind of nice. cool. Actually. Oh, yeah. how interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very good. That's totally fun. All right. My beer is the dreamer Hefeweizen by cool. Treehouse brewing in Charlton, Massachusetts, 5.2 ABV, no IBU listed. Um, this was actually uh, gifted to me uh, by a friend of mine named Paul Dever of Dever's customs. And uh, that's why I'm wearing my Boston uh, Red Sox hat and uh, Dever Custom shirt. Um, this beer, um, it has like ripe banana, spicy clove, and a hint of bubble gum uh, wow. in it. Uh, doughy malts and a kiss of er earthly, let's see if I can say this right. A kiss of earthy hops wrapped up in an extraordinarily creamy mouthfeel. Wow. Boy, say that 10 times fast. No. Um, no. What style did you say that was? It's a Hefeweizen. It's a half. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's really, it's like really pungent. And it's like, and 
I'm getting better now at like knowing which beers are like East Coast and West Coast because mm -hmm. there's a lot of those tropical flavors um, that that you guys have in your beers where this is just like straight up just like a real sweet uh, like pungent beer you know it's like yeah. uh, more of a German style beer and uh, it's really super delicious though and it has really cool artwork it's part of like uh, an artist series so they have like the Nomad the Wanderer the Outlier uh, Pearl and Trail so it's like a whole like artist series so because it has like this why as you can no see there why is, there, why, don't, why is there no Mondragon can come on I know. Well, see, I, I need to make my I need to make my mark in this business so I can get a uh, can. But it has like really awesome artwork all around it. I can, I can totally see you doing something really cool for that. Oh, I I mean, this is one thing that inspires me about craft beer as well. Like the artwork for it is like yep. it's insane, oh, yeah. and uh, some of the packaging is really super unique. Uh, the brewery West that you had last week, like I keep their cans yeah. because their packaging is so like cool. really super elaborate. Yeah, I have another one in my fridge. Uh, I got Trader Joe's to try, but I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna get and get it. But I, I, I like, I dig their artwork because it's weird because with the the plain kind of can and it's like the little like it's almost like a sticker with a logo on it. Those look always really nice. Yeah, and uh, so I, I, he also gave me the green IPA, the Julius IPA, and then there's a haze IPA. So I was very very nice for him to give. This is Paul Dever. Um, uh, check him out at Dever's Custom. He does these uh, custom uh, uh, pumpkin carvings and. Uh, uh, Paul Dever, Matt Harper, and myself, we run Great. Carvers and Creators, which is usually on Thursdays, but it's actually on tomorrow, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. And we just, they sit there for uh, an hour and a half and carve while I moderate comments and ask about art nerdy stuff. But they're trying to get me to do some carving. So check it out. I, I'm, I can't wait to do it. Um, so it's going to be fun. All I right. Want, so I, let, want, uh, I, once did some, I once did some fruit carving. I did fruit carving on my honeymoon, and I sliced my thumb. Fun fact. Oh no! Oh, but no. I, uh, but but I, I made I made one hell of a uh, one hell of a cantaloupe swan or melon honeydew swan. <laughs> that, well, these uh, Paul Dever and Matt Harper were actually on Food Network, and same with uh, Danny Kissel. Uh, they were actually at Halloween Wars, and Paul Dever won. Uh, a ten thousand dollar prize for winning outrageous pumpkins. So, like these are wow. big time pumpkin carvers. So, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, before we go into this day in baseball history, I wanted to uh, uh, see who's out there. Uh, Cowboy Jack Durango uh, hey. is out there uh, giving us some, you know, trying trying to figure out who is the most handsome here. Uh, <laughs> the, the big cowboy. Um, well, I don't well, know. Why am I not, why am I not mentioned there? I, I, I don't know. know. Cowboy Jack, <laughs> no. come on. Oh, Angela's yeah, getting well. jealous here. Um, yeah. Ed, Ed's out there. Uh, rock the bells for sure. Uh, David, thank you so much for joining. Uh, All Angels podcast is boo, Boston. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I was I'm waiting for Kevin Boston to say that. I'm like, I want to throw darts at him or something. We're in Boston. <laughs> right on. Okay, so. For, for Angels fans down here in Orange County. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I think of the uh, what was it, the Henderson home run, oh, and no, yeah, no, we don't no, we don't speak it. about that. Yeah, don't you speak about that, please. My bad. Look, my All right. <laughs> Let's start off with uh, August eleventh, nineteen twelve. Shoeless Joe Jackson completes the stolen base cycle when he swipes home in the seventh inning of the Indians' eight to three victory over New York at Cleveland's League Park. The 25-year-old outfielder had made his way around the bases by stealing second and third base before the thievery of home plate to complete the cycle. Now, um, Kevin and I were talking about this. There, this may not be potentially the cycle if something happens that they're experimenting with with, with the experimental rules. They're, they're experimenting with a, a rule that you can actually steal first base. And it happens when... Um, I think it's on uh, the way I the, the way I heard it termed was if you like if the pitcher throws like say like bounces one at the plate like even on a one zero count like bounces oh, it really you can you can actually run the first base they're actually experimenting with it so like I, wow. in the middle of the at bat you could run the first base like on a one zero count basically I was thinking it was going to be like you know the strike three if it goes past the catcher and you could run the first and try to get there I thought that would I don't know if that would be considered a stolen base or not. I don't think it is, but it's right. It's a strikeup, but it's not scored a stolen base. Right. Right. So um, this would be a straight steal of first. They're actually it thinking is. about it. 
I, I thought that was really interesting. So this this technically would not be the cycle in that scenario. But that's interesting. He did all that in one yeah one time too. Yeah, that's like even more amazing. Yes, definitely. So I don't even remember him being on the Indians. Uh, I always think of him. Wow, you know. Oh wow! I, I didn't even I didn't put that together. Yeah, because I was in Cleveland against the Yankees. I'm like, he's on the Indians. I don't remember that. <laughs> So August 11th, 1951, wow. WCBS TV televises the first baseball game broadcast in color, a Dodgers victory over the visiting Braves in the first game of a twin bill. Brooklyn's announcer, Red Barber and Kona, uh, Connie Desmond provide the play-by-play -play commentary for the Ebbets Field contest, detailing Ralph Branca's victory over the eventual 20-game winner, Warren Spahn. We take this so for granted, but yeah. like it was in 1951. What was yeah. not that long ago. Yeah, and you got to remember only a month or two later, Ralph Branca gets you, you know, the, that's in 51. The, the famous shot heard around the world was 51 as well. You know, you got that. And right, and all of a sudden, like, Vince Scully did not took over for him, Red Barber, not that much later. Which yeah, I that's know, right. I know it's not that far off from this. And Red Barber should be able to do at that point. Speaking of uh, Warren Spahn, oh, yeah. uh, August 11th, 1961, in front of a packed county stadium in Milwaukee, Braves lefty Warren Spahn scatters six hits uh, to beat the Cubs 2-1 to one for his 300th victory. The 40-year-old Southpaw, who will finish his career with 363 wins, uh, the most of any left-hander in the history of the game, wow. is 13th uh, Major League uh, hurler to reach the milestone. I, I, you know, you don't hear enough about this guy. You know, no, as far as a dominant pitcher, there's there's guys like this that have these stats that no one talks about. Well, yeah, I think what the the, the and what what kind of solidifies that is the last two facts, right? Ten years apart. You know, between the last two facts, yep. and we went from a, a him mentioning as a as a twenty game winner in the 1951 season to achieving his 300th victory ten years later. I mean, that means he amassed. He's 40. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's at 40, he's at 40 years it. old. Yeah. So, uh, and and so I mean that that, that kind of speaks to his ability to not only not only his pitching his pitching ability but his ability to um evolve his game as he you know as he uh had as he got towards the tail end of the tail end of his career you, know, you see you see that kind of happen a lot we talked about nolan ryan last week mm -hmm. you know yeah the, these guys have to change their pitching style to and to adjust the longevity of their career they don't have the um the luxury of a position player to transition into a dh role you know, at the, at the in the in the twilight of their career, so they have to really adjust and really work on their you know, really their off speed stuff. So yeah, and, so he and, dominated yeah. the fifties. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. A well, the, he dominated. Yeah, I remember he was thirty yeah. in nineteen sixty in nineteen fifty one. So you know, he was probably starting right around. I don't I don't remember his rookie year, but it had to be like right around World War Two. He probably served in mm. World War Two. I know. Right. That's that's nuts. Yeah, and uh, I, yeah. I don't know if they, they printed this up before or after, uh, but I thought this was a really super cool, oh, cool. Uh, little that's thing that really I saw cool. out there. Um, and I saw some some people uh, actually, this one's a like a facsimile of a, a signature, but I mm -hmm. saw people ha actually had it signed. So there's there's ones ah, out there great. that are signed of that. So that, that's a really cool thing. And that's cool. August 11th. Uh, 1968, as a pinch hitter, Gates Brown has two walk-off hits in Detroit's <laughs> twin bill sweep of the Red Sox at Tiger Stadium. His pinch hit home run off Lee Strange or Stange in the 14th inning uh, ends the opener 5-4. to four. Coming off the bench in the ninth frame of the nightcap, singles <laughs> off uh, Sparky Lyle, scoring yeah, Mickey Sparky. Stanley to give the Tigers nice. a 6-5 victory. Um, that's, in that's incredible. That, I mean, just to come off the bench and, and, you know, the cleaner, they should call him the cleaner. Yeah. I mean, wow. And 14 innings. So they played 23 innings that day. I was like, Oh my gosh. You know, that's crazy. Long, that's a long one. August 11th, 1970 with a six to five victory over the Astros Phillies right-hander Jim Bunning becomes the first pitcher since Cy Young to win a hundred games in both leagues. During his nine years with the Tigers, the future U.S. Senator right. compiled yep. a 118 and 87 record in wow. the American League. I, 
that is incredible. What, what, what is there, is there anybody else that now that could, oh, let me just, was it just, well, no, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, no, Verlander I, is, I, has been always in the American League. I don't think Nolan Ryan, I guess Nolan Ryan must not have, I don't know if Nolan Ryan did that or not, because he only, I mean, he played for the Astros for a number of years, but I don't know if he would have got 100 wins or not. It's probably pretty close. I'd have to like. Yeah, you definitely, definitely look that up when, um, when we can, because that's a, that's a really great guess, because you're right. Um, now, what I was going to look up was, I don't remember, did Jim Bunning make the Hall of Fame? Because he was always one of those guys who was like borderline. I don't believe he's a Hall of Famer off the top of my head. Right now, while, while, we're, while yeah. we're talking here. Yeah, he he is the sole MLB athlete to be elected to both the U.S. Senate and the Hall of Fame. Yeah. There you go. He actually passed away by about th- a little over three years ago. I remember he had passed away, yeah. He got inducted in uh, 1996. Uh, okay. So I don't know so if he got co- voted in or if that was in the Veterans Committee. Um, and yeah. So no, no, Nolan Ryan um, won 100 games as an Astro. There you go. Uh, in July, in July 9th, nineteen eighty-eight. But did he win? Did he? Did he amass a hundred wins with? Oh, for really? sure. Yeah, for sure. Because he spent more time in the American League between the Angels and the Astros. When you have the Mets in there too, because he wasn't the Mets originally. Right, the right. Time. So he, the, uh, Jim Bunning was a first pitcher for that to yeah. happen. Yeah. Right. So Colin Duncan says, uh, "Forget oh, Kenny Omega yeah. being the cleaner." Yeah, yeah. Gates Brown. Uh, uh, Gates Brown will always be my cleaner. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, pull this up again. Let's go. All right, tag with a loss in a Twins six to three defeat to California. Terry Felton's career drops to zero wow. and fourteen. Wow, twenty-four year old right-hander who will not win uh, will not win a game in his fifty-five major league appearances establishes a new mark for worst individual start oh. in a baseball history, surpassing <laughs> Guy Morton's nineteen fourteen record of thirteen consecutive losses uh, from the beginning of a career. Now let's look at his baseball card from that year. Oh my God. So in, in before this um, he didn't, he pitched one five and one game um, and like just ba- the 21 innings, but that year he pitched uh, 48 games and 117 innings. Look at that. And- 82. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How did he stay on the team that long? Exactly. Oh I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay. Um, because um, it, it was all from, um, I, ha- I have a little piece, a uh, cover of a magazine that will prove uh, why why he was on this team. But, and, uh, I mean, yeah, his ERA is, yeah. Like, yeah his five. ERA, man. And Jeez. his 82 highlights are actually when he got a save. He pitched three and a third scoreless inning for a yeah. save. And uh, yeah, fan the final <laughs> two batters for a save and a 5-4 decision. At least, um, he got, at least he got a save, you know. He got three saves. Good job. And he was a part of a triple play. Had the distinction of yeah. a put out at third to complete a triple play against the Yankees. Now, my question to you, really quickly: Would you have wanted you you okay? You get to play in the major leagues, yes. but you have to be Terry Felton. Would you take it? Well, sure, of course, absolutely. Then that like, awesome. Look, how many people knew who Terry Felton is when you brought up that card right now? Probably some twin fans who are now like way older, and they're probably just like, Ugh! and I'm gonna swear under my breath, like that, that, that Felton, you know? God, yeah, this guy yeah, yeah. Just like Felton. Like as far as Felton isn't like the Mendoza, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, in the Marlon Mendoza line, how is there not like the Terry Felton? You know, poor Anthony Young, you know? Right, that guy, right, right. Yeah, that was that was like, tough. I remember, I remember that. We went in a row over yeah. the course of three years. I was gonna bring him up in, in some other. Years. I was gonna bring him. Uh, uh, I was gonna bring him up in some other stuff, but um, we'll definitely talk about him at length. I think he's he's got he's worth expanding that. But this Absolutely. is why this was a. I remember. I wow. super remember this cover. Uh, oh, yeah. It was July of 1982. I remember being at the airport because uh, ah. it was going somewhere. So the best of the worst rookie sensation, Kent Herbeck of the yep. terrible Twins. Yeah. Can you imagine Kent Herbeck going back into that locker room after this cover comes out? Like you're the best of the worst. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine what that well, is? But that's why. And then the funny part was, uh, yeah, ni- 1990. Who were the worst teams? That, who were two of the worst teams in baseball? The Twins and the Braves. Yeah. Last place. What was the World Series 1991? The Twins and the Braves. That's that was right. The was worth the first series. That's right. You know. August 11th, 1991. Uh, in his 
only uh, in only his second big league start, 21-year-old White Sox southpaw Wilson Alvarez becomes the 16th rookie to throw a no-hitter, beating the Orioles seven to nothing. Only Browns her uh, only Browns hurler Bobo Holeman, who threw a no-no in his first major league start in 1953, accomplished the feat in fewer starts. That's and I know it. I know what you're all asking. Wilson Alvarez, who? No, no, <laughs> Bobo. No, 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 no. Bobo Holeman, who? Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. At, at least. Um, well, I knew Wilson Alvarez. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought this was, I didn't think this was a 91. I thought this was like later on in the 90s, but um, yeah. it was actually yeah. earlier. All right. Um, August 11th, 2003, Paw Tuckett's uh, Red Sox right hander, Bronson Arroyo, throws the second perfect game in three years for the team and fourth in the 120 year history of the International League when he beats Buffalo at McCoy Stadium, seven to nothing. In 2001, Tomo Oka, who will be a member of the Expos two seasons later, also set down 27 consecutive batters for the Paw Sox in a 2-0 victory over the Charlotte Knights in the same Rhode Island ballpark. Wow. wow. Now, that it, it's, uh, it's super cool, and I thought this was a great stat because I wanted to add something to this. And I looked up this picture. Now, I, uh, Kevin, did you yes. go to the stadium? No, but you did. I did, uh, yeah. right, and uh, I picked up a shirt from the 32-inning yes. game yep. that was over two days, but I did not see this there, and I just happened to see this, oh, and I'm like, God. yeah, I, I, I really wish I would have seen that. I got this of my library to read. There's actually a book about that game, you know, the 32-inning awesome. game, because um, uh, it had uh, – Cal Ripken was on was on the Rochester team, and Wade Boggs was on the Pawtucket team that year. Right. So I pulled up this picture because I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. I never saw this at, at, at McCoy cool. Stadium. Uh, I was there a couple uh -oh. of years ago. And yeah. uh, so I look at it and I'm like, ah, that's curious. It says August 10th, 2003, not August Whoa. 11th. Okay. So, so I looked it up and in another place, it said August 11th, uh, which was a recount of, a game, of the game. Okay. And I was like, and then I looked at it and I'm like, oh, I see what happened. They actually reported it on August 11th, so now it's become, it. it's become, yeah, it's become that day. So it's actually August 10th, and it was oh, even wow. listed as August 11th in my, um, in my this day in baseball history. Right, because the so, game, the perfect game, ended on August 11th. There you go. So yeah, so ba basically, right, right. So, um, so I looked in the. If you look in the upper left corner. Um, Kevin Euclid was yep. oh, a part of that go. game. So yes. what is Kevin Euclid doing now? I know former you know. major league baseball. Kevin Euclid owns his own, uh, Loma brewing company. Um, and, uh, it's in Los Gatos, California. And so I, I wanted to, uh, go up there this year. Obviously the pandemic kind of put, uh, uh, thwarted that. I and, know. uh, he actually runs, uh, the Greek God of hops, podcast as well so oh, definitely wow. check that out that's awesome so, yeah so all this and the date's wrong <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, right. just, I'm just hey, i'm just glad i could see right. it send about you it's, and, and right. it's a technicality technical started on the 10th it ended on the 11th yeah he completed the perfect game on the 11th all right <laughs> all right so yeah. so you guys definitely wanted me to get this in here august 11th 2005 Mets outfielders Carlos Beltran and Mike Cameron running at full speed in an attempt to catch a Padres oh David gosh. Ross uh, oh. seventh inning short fly to <laughs> right center dive oh. headfirst into each oh. other in one of the most horrific collisions in baseball history. Now I didn't. I actually did not include this in in my because I I hate um collisions Ugh. the right fielder cameron who <laughs> suffered a broken nose and multiple fractures of both cheekbones will go facial surgery in san diego so this was at uh petco park right yeah okay were there any uh, petco in five there are yeah it was, it, yeah it was because I, i'll show okay. I'll, sh I'll show you the the next picture okay. Uh, will undergo facial surgery in san diego and his teammates uh center fielder carlos beltran fares a bit better suffering a concussion and a small fracture in his cheekbone now, I can't imagine, like, there, there was, uh, there's only, like, screenshots, but this was, like, the best picture I could get. 
it's horrific yep. to think like what uh, was going on. And if you look there, I'm, that might be a tooth uh, that oh. I, I, looks like grass. I don't know what it is. It could be, could be somebody's oh. eye for all I know. Um, <laughs> but you guys wanted to comment on this. Um, no, he did. He did. Oh, not me. oh Angelo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Angelo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this, I mean, this, I mean, that collision is so gnarly and uh, kind of that the video or the replays was like kind of embedded in, in the head for, for several years. And, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this is uh, I was actually involved in a outfield collision when I played uh, adult league softball, it just a few years after this happened. And, um, uh, and uh, yeah, collisions are no fun. Um, you know, my, uh, so I was playing, uh, I was playing uh, center and a friend of mine was playing left. My teammate was playing left field and we were running and uh, full, full speed. Uh, I dove for the, for the fly ball. Uh, he didn't, he was trying to, you know, just catch it at, at full speed. So we collided and my, uh, my face uh, went into his knee <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, it was, it, it was not pretty. Uh, and it was not fun. It looked like I went 12 rounds with, with Mike Tyson. Uh, but I, uh, I suffered a, a mild concussion and uh, my tooth almost went through, um, this part of my, uh, right underneath yeah. my lip. Oh. So it did, it, it broke the inside of the skin, but not the, but not the outside. And, uh, yeah, not fun. And, uh, the, all I, in, uh, all I remember was like when, when, uh, because they had to call the ambulance and stuff like that when I, when when I was getting carted out like they were like like oh man that was like that was like Cameron and Cameron and Bill, oh, man. Like, oh no they, oh, yeah no. Dude, it was yeah it was it, it was pretty bad yeah. uh and much like this situation you know uh, my my roommate did, fared much better than I did uh but uh but yeah I showed up to work I showed up to work the next day with a fat lip and wearing sunglasses because I had a black eye. So, well, at least um, you were alive, and that—that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Like, I mean, I can't imagine what. I mean, oh my god! Like, yeah. So the the so the important lesson here is call for the ball. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. So so uh, what position were you playing? I was playing center. Okay, he so it's your ball. Left. Yeah. Oh. And he and he and he was playing left. So which is which is but but. You know, I attempted to dive for it, so you could say that he had a better play at it. But you know, did you call it? I no, no, I didn't call it. But in ah. and in this case, neither of them called it either. That's true. So, yeah, you got the old Kenny the Cleaner Omega like V trigger knee. It sounds like yeah, <laughs> it was bad. yeah, it was it, it, it was it was yeah. bad. Ooh. it it sounds like when I used to. Back in my wrestling days, I was working at Home Depot, and I would come back after matches, and, and people were looking at me like, "What happened to you?" <laughs> yeah, back after exactly. Matches. Right. <laughs> you used to be able to read like ASIC footprints on my back. <laughs> yeah, All Angel Podcast says Pet, Petco that. opened in two thousand four. Thank yeah. you. I had that ready, but I, I I didn't know when to intersperse that information. And Cowboy Jack says Angelo is tougher than a two dollar steak. Uh, cut out of a government mule. I haven't heard Probably the last that part of that. That's, that's <laughs> uh, Thanks, very nice. Thanks, yeah. Jack. So yeah, we're we're glad we're glad that you're still here, Angela. I mean, like, well, uh, a lot of people say that you know baseball is you know uh, not as tough as other sports. I mean, when you see stuff like this, it, it can be just as dangerous. Um, Just ask Ray Fossey. All right, yeah, right. right? Yeah, and actually, and, you know, they're doing more things to protect players, but like on plays like this, um, you nobody can protect them. They're on their no. on their own. Yeah, we joked. I was got taken out by a foul ball in, at Petco. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. It's one. It's one of my stellar moments in my major league baseball's uh, spectatorship where I got yep. that ball. But you, you almost, <laughs> you almost took the yeah, L. Like, oh my oh, god! <laughs> and then you just grabbed it. Like, okay, good. You got ball by a Cardinal player, Harrison. Bader? Harrison Bader. Yes. yes, exactly. All right. So let's get to it. Baseball oh, cards, yes. pack wars. As always, we get our baseball cards from hall of fame, baseball cards in Arcadia, California, HOFBC, except for the series two baseball, which Chad M was nice enough to gift us. Here are the pack war standings. Um, I'm uh, catching up boys. Currently, all right. I'm catching up boys. Well, I'll tell you, it's it's actually um, a pretty a good uh, race here where Angelo fell behind early, but he's catching up. 
Um, yeah, I gifted him one last week, though. I gifted you one last week. All right, that's for, that's for sure. That's for but sure. I was still a winner because I, I got I got that, so it's all right. <laughs> that's like my asterisk, you know. <laughs> so these are the baseball card pack wars rules. You open up your pack. A relic card knocks out one participant of choice. An autograph card knocks out both participants. After all packs are open, high number card wins. Collectively drink when we get a Brewers card. That means you out there watching us. And uh, I've added this. Uh, a, one of you. our super fans, Cowboy Jack Durango, uh, is mandatory drinks after every card. So thank you, Jack, for joining again. All right, so let me check. Uh, He's excited about seeing that as, uh, on, as an official rule. Congratulations, Jack. There you go. So, Kevin, you're in the lead, so why don't you go first? I'm in the lead. Let's do our two uh, opening days then. You got it. I'm, I'm, we didn't talk about this, but I'm guessing that's still the plan is do that. All right, let's see what I got here. All right, my first pack, I have Sean Murphy from the Athletics. Oh, I'm starting off hot here. Get your cups ready. Orlando Arcia from Los Brewers. Salud. Drink out of my jug. <laughs> <laughs> I wish your jug had three X's on it. Enough because uh, I'm not making enough noise then. <laughs> from the Braves, Max Freed. Oh, multiple times Cy Young Award winner, Jacob DeGrom. We got... Corey Seeger, JT Realmuto, and uh, my answer here is team traditions and celebrations, a place that uh, you mentioned often and Boston's been brought up way too much today, but Pesky's Pole. Oh, yeah. My very first time at Fenway, I sat right next to Pe Pesky Pole, and uh, people take Sharpies and write their name in it, and, it, and uh, it's actually pretty graffitied, uh, right. which, I didn't, which I didn't expect. Well, thank you for doing that because that killed enough time for me to open up my next pack. All right, we have Ahmed Rosario from Los Mets. We have Merrill Kelly from the D-backs. Jean the Segura from the Phillies. That's a cool card there. Uh, I have Omar Navarez, Kim of the Catchers, Buster Posey, Elvis Andrus. And all right, keeping it going, baby. Opening day, the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, Bubble Pugs says, let's see those Brewers. I got, I got, I got two. That's a good starting, start. There we go, starting with fire. And you right know on. what, I big bummer because I had it, I had a trip to Milwaukee plan this year and didn't get a chance uh, to go out there because this is mostly last year, it's Miller Park, and that's why I was hoping to go this year. Right. Yeah, so I, I guess now the year that I went is the last year of Miller Park. Yep. Yeah, because the, the sponsorship change, changes next year. All right, Angela, All right, you're, Angela up. you're up. All right. Here we go, 2020 opening day. Oh, I already see a good one on the back uh -oh. end. I'll, say, I'll save it for last. Ooh. Trevor Story. Horror Story. Mike <laughs> Soroka. Out for the season, yep. unfortunately. Max Scherzer. Patrick. Corbin, Alex Bregman, Tyler Glassnow, and get your beers ready for oh. Bernie, oh, Bernie Brewer. Brewer. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. Wow. wow, I got the Milwaukee opening day and you got the mascot. Very good. So that should be an extended drink. I'm glad right. you said the mascots, Michael. Yes. Masahiro Tanaka. David Dahl, non relic. <laughs> Aaron Nola. Heard this kid's all right. Cody Bellinger. Yeah. Right. One day. One day for him. <laughs> Emilio Pagan. Justin Verlander. Mr. Kate Upton. <laughs> and opening day, Cincinnati Reds. All right. Nice. All right. So uh, I'm up. Uh, Bubble Pug says it will always be Miller Park to me. Absolutely. That's why I want to go. I want to go out Miller Park. And do, do we know who the me. naming rights went to yet? Oh, uh, I, that's it's a good a, thing. I think I can't remember for sure. Hope maybe Bob Plug can tell us, but I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But I was, it was a really disappointment. And I was gonna see like a 
punk rock festival out in Madison. So I was like, I got to go to Milwaukee. And I was going to yep. catch a Boys and Hampers game too. And and go to the Crusher statue too. Oh, yes. The rest of and, the Crusher. And the Bronze and Fawns. The Milwaukee famous. Yes. And the Bronze Fawns. Yes. All right. Uh, Keston Hira, get Yay! your beers out. Yay. All right. We're wow. Cowboy Jack Durango today. We're drinking after every guard. <laughs> Kenta Maeda. Maeda, Kenta. That's it. I have his bobblehead. Albert Pujols. You're that game? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So are we. The man who started it all, Mike Fires. The fire oh, sale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Brad Hand, who did well for my uh, fantasy league last year. Yeah, friend Meal, well, former man. Padre, friend Meal Reyes. 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 And uh, this one's it says Crown Vision Team Traditions and Celebrations. Uh, this is for the Kansas City Royals. Cool. All right. That's awesome. Very nice. So uh, pack two. Oh, really uh, wanted, Bubble Puck, really, really, Bubble Puck really, says it's Am Fam Field. What, what, what is Am Fam? I, I guess it's American it, Family. American it's like an insurance American company. Family. Yeah. Oh, okay. How do they afford that? Cowboy know. Jack Durango says this show has made me a Brewers fan. Absolutely. All right. well, good. Well, better than the Diamondbacks. Sorry. <laughs> Although uh, they have Cole, they do have Cole Calhoun. Max Kepler. <clears throat> right. Oh, uh, Paul De Jong, De Jong, De Jong. I always think it's it, it, De Jong. It's De, I yeah. De Jong, yeah. Is that COVID? I always think it's De, De Jong, but I always hear De Jong. It's like I think it's because of the the Midwest announcers don't. Uh, uh, Mike Shannon, who does the Cardinals broadcast, he would always call Ichiro. He would call him Ichiro. So I think it's a Midwest thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, former Cardinal, now Miami uh, Marlin, uh, Sandy Alcantara. We actually saw him pitch in the Arizona Fall League, Kevin. Right. Uh, Josh Bell. The Pirates, uh, Marcus Stroman, uh, Kirby Yates. Oh. What's that? I was asking if that was him as a Met. Uh, it is. And opening day, at Texas Rangers. Although right. this is this is not the stadium that they're in right. anymore. It's the old stadium. Yeah, that's the old stadium. Yeah, I, I never got a chance to go there, unfortunately. The I can't have that to my retirement list. All right, Kevin, oh, what's your high card? Uh, my high card is... Jacob DeGrom of the New York Mets, number 187. Ooh, that's going to be tough. Ooh. Pretty good. I think, 200 is, I think May Machado, 200 is the kill card, which I know we didn't have that. Emilio Pagan, 194. Ooh! So uh, I have a Brad Hand that beats you by one, 195. Oh. Wow. And it, wow. And if wow. that didn't work, I had a Josh Bell at 197. So maybe wow. I should keep you, this ace you? up my sleeve. Wow. Don't call it a comeback. I've hey, been these, here for uh, years. These, these, these are, that's, these that's are work packs, brother. They're I thought you were going to win because we have All Angels Podcast with us because that's that's the reason why you brought, you came back, Angelo. All Angels <laughs> Podcast is always here, though. And, and I think he brought you back. All right, so uh, I will go. Let's go with uh, Series 1. All righty. Top Series 1. Uh, we're almost out of these, right? Yeah, we're almost out. Angela still have, has, uh, Angela has two pack, left, one less pack two, than have, us. Yeah, I have two packs left, including this one. So. Yeah, I think I have three, and you still have not gotten your relic or autograph. I have not, got, I have not gotten mine. Yeah. So Joey Lucchesi of the uh, Padres. Uh... Heimer Condelario. I'm not even familiar with this guy. Tigers. Yeah. Uh, Brandon McKay. From, from Brandon McKay of the Rays. Yep. Uh, Jake Marisnik. I'm sure uh, uh, Angels fans do not like this guy. Uh, Tyler Glasnow. Come on, as long as Dave Henderson. Kikuchi, you say. Uh, Mike Soroka. Oh, poor guy. That's yeah. That guy had a bad break. Yeah, Adam Frazier. Adam Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Max Scherzer. <laughs> no, you meant, you meant down goes Soroka. <laughs> down goes Emilio Pagan. <laughs> <laughs> down goes Mister Upton. Mister Upton. 
Uh, At least you don't call him Justin Upton, because then then everybody could be confused. Uh, this is a Bryce Harper. This is a this is an interesting card. Walk off Grand Slam uh, seals epic comeback. But this I was a top now. The this top might, be an, might be an advertisement first, card. That's the first tops now card we got in this entire box. Oh wow! Box yeah, friend Meal Reyes, Reyes, right. and uh, the immune compromised David Dahl. <laughs> that, that's now going to be a stat. Big sigh. I, I, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. All right, who's next? Uh, uh, I'll pick yeah. Angelo. Angelo, uh, go for right. it. Yeah, come on. All Winner right, two. here we go. Let's you got see two packs I, left. Let's see if I get my autograph or relic or autograph just, relic. Just back. remember, I did not kick you out either time I got a relic. Okay? <laughs> no one for in the audience. <laughs> Gary Sanchez. Ronald Acuna Jr. Right. Mitch Garver. Chris Davis, Jose Martinez, uh, Randall Grichuk, Carson Kelly. This is tense, Angelo. <laughs> Steven Strasburg, Mitch Hanniger, Juan Soto. Nice. That's a good pack. That's good Tim pack. Anderson. All right. We okay. got uh, Jesse Winkler. Okay. Uh, Pete Alonzo. Nice. Oh, is that the kill card? It is the kill card. Ah. Make sure, make but sure it's kind of. But, it, but it's. But it's. But it's. But it's. In that set. Make sure it's no, 350, please. It is, it is 350, but it's kind right. of a waste because oh, I got, got my it. Brian Reynolds. Oh, yeah. That's our first autograph. Awesome. Yeah. First autograph. Wow. A walk off. Nicely yes. done. Very good. Definitely uh -oh. um, um, send a picture of that. Uh, take a picture of that, and yep. uh, we'll we'll post that. Yeah. Uh, so our first autograph. I I, I right. don't think that. Um, well, we we yeah, thought no one's got an autograph, and that's pretty week. rare. Remember your your fifty six oh, yeah. card last week. Yeah, I thought I got that Gavin Lux autograph last yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> So that I, one. I, I, I wish so. I got the autograph and the kill card in the same yes. bag. Exactly. You won't look, no matter what, and, you know. Um, yeah. Is that numbered the autograph card? Uh, it is not. Uh, it's it is not numbered. Oh, okay, I was just curious. All right. Yeah. So right, Kevin, so you're, you uh, you don't even go. I don't. What do you? Oh, that's right. We're both back. Gosh. Yeah, we we're, were both eliminated on a on a on a. Right. Autograph card. is two. Yeah. Great. So you, I have three packs left. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, Angelo, you're up. I was ready. I'm like, oops, never mind. Top series two. Uh, Colin Duncan says, "Congrats, Angelo." Yeah, that's a cool card. All Angels podcast on on board with that one. Yep. All right, Domingo Leba, Max Fried, all these horizontal cards. John Birdie, Chad Pinder. TJ Zooth. Hope you're seeing all the love for you, Angelo. You're getting mm -hmm. a lot of love right now. Yeah. Justice Sheffield. Paul DeYoung. D. Gordon. Hey, Brian Reynolds. I just got his autograph. Hey, there you pre go. Previous pack. It's cool. It's I believe it's is that a I don't know what that is on the bottom. I can't see. Oh, like There's a little I think it's like the future stars. Yeah. I think it's yeah. Uh, Kevin Kramer. Mike Miner. Ooh, look at this. Oh, I think we've gotten cards like this before. Uh, the Chris Bryant. Oh, the yeah. This uh, remember the Hall of Fame calls that the Disco Machine card. The Disco <laughs> Machine card. Yeah. Who's disco Machine. What are you talking? I about? have no idea. It's it's some some indie wrestler. Isn't that Cowboy Jack Durango cat? Disco Meowshin? <laughs> it is. Disco Meowshin. <laughs> hey, 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 you, what's that sound? <laughs> yep. Colton Wong. All right. Oh, he's still going. All and right. Quang Hyun Kim. Yes. All right. Um, Cowboy Jack Durango, if I missed uh, it, forgive me, uh, but Angela's sh a shirt is dope. How do? What is it and how do I get it? All right, so this was the uh, we talked about it in the what you drink in, but he was probably right. drinking. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so this is the uh, around the horn uh, strikeout T-shirt from Baseballism. 
There's two variations of the shirt. This is the strikeout version. And then there's also around the horn ground out version. That's in uh Heather gray or black. So baseballism.com cowboy Jack, check it out. Yeah, that's it. And I put it in the uh, chat as well. And I believe what you say it was, you get a free hat with, with a $50 purchase. Is that what yeah, I heard? Right, yeah. Through August 15th, you get a free hat with a $50 purchase. Right on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I love I love baseballism, and it's it's one of my favorite um, uh, products uh, associated with baseball. They have so many cool things. So, and it's a lot of seasonal stuff too. So, yeah. you know, yeah. you have to hop on it when you get it. So, Jack, uh, they might have Arizona themed stuff too, Jack. I don't know if yeah, sure on that. They they, they have a they actually have a brick and mortar in Scottsdale. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there will be Arizona themed stuff if you want that, Jack. You know, we should get a kickback. He's ordering now. Oh, geez. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, revved up. This is the uh, Washington Nationals. Oh, that's funny. Howie Kendrick. Uh, Jonathan Hernandez. Uh, this is Chad. We need, we need some Brewers. Come on. Yeah, I know. What happened to him? Uh, Chad Wallach. Any relation to Tim Wallach? Any yeah. relation to him? Uh, Sean Manea, who threw a uh, no hitter uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Martin Perez of uh, is it the yeah, Boston Red Sox, uh, Jose Osuna, uh, not looking very in shape wow. right there. Wow. That, that uniform does not flatter him whatsoever. No, I'm glad that uh, uh, the panda didn't have, wasn't wearing that jersey, <laughs> uh, Gio Urshela. Who uh, did a really great uh, job last year? Luis Renfigo. See him? Oh yeah. Yep. We're like the uh, there. Nice. Steven Duggar. Uh, let's see. Renato Nunez. I have to remember to kind of angle it. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman. <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, the throwback card. So this is a uh, Rod cool. Carew. Oh, that's oh. awesome! The thirty fifth anniversary of the All Star. Win. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would yeah, that's a good yeah. If, if it was a uh, first of the twins in that era. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Seventy three AL leaders. Now look at that! Wow. I don't know if Killebrew was still on the team at that point or not. That sounds like around the time Killebrew would have been done. Can you imagine yeah, Killebrew and Carew? Oh my god! I know that's insane. Uh, Tom Murphy and Steven Strasburg. All right, all right. Uh, Kevin, you're up. I have to say, we have not gotten one Brewer since opening day packs. So I hope I hope I can change that luck for us here. Uh, the first, wow, who I never heard. Um, Williams Astudio. Astudio. The, I like, La Tortuga. Whoa. Oh, is that Tortuga? Yes. Oh, wow. That's a great nickname. All right. I have uh, AJ Pollock. Wow. We really do have a lot of horizontal cards here. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hunter Harvey. Trevor Williams. Ian Happ. Now I've talked about it. I better get a brewer. Come on. Miguel Andahar. Jonathan Shoup. Shoot, baby, shoot. Shoot, shoot, baby. Shoop. Uh, a Hide Adrianza. Hopefully I got that right. I'm oh going to make it up. <laughs> uh, Wade uh, Miley. Oh, no. We did. We fought, we started strong but finished weak, unfortunately, here. We got Wilson Contreras. <laughs> uh, Elvis Luciano. Uh, my, I have a... Uh, one of the 1985 style cards of JT Rio Muto. Okay, cool. And I got um, uh, Bruce Star Gatterall. Gatterall, sorry. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Taylor. So, wow, we went cold on those brewers. But yeah. Okay. Probably Jack is still drinking. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't care. I know he doesn't. <laughs> it's fine. All right, so um, my heart high card was a six forty. Six forty. John Berdy is six ninety three. Wow. wow, man! I'm still going. Oh, oh my gosh! Hang on. 
I'm still going. I'm literally still going through my cards. So I have 690 and 692. Ah, two wins, baby! Wow, Angelo. I was gonna say, do the LL Cool J. Don't call it a comeback. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, I mean, I'm, 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 I've been cooled down. I've been cooled off. <laughs> Wait, I'm who won? Uh, oh, Mike, Mike won. Yeah, so I, yeah, I won now, one. So, so now I'm tied with Kevin because now I have 14 wins. Ooh. I, I, I saw this pack. I opened. I didn't get a chance to go through it. Oh, well. Hey, well, hey, you can thank Brian Reynolds for that. Right here. Yeah, exactly. Nicely hey, done. God, the I, other thing, the, hey, I have more the packs other, than the, all you guys. That's the funny the, part. The, the, the other thing about Brian Reynolds, he didn't shut down the show like David Dahl did. So. Yeah, I know. David Dahl. <laughs> He's immune yep. compromised. That's why I had to shut down the show. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> it's all that. Uh, we have empathy for him. <laughs> right. Yes, absolutely. All right. So we will update the standings. Thank you for joining us and participating. Um, so let's get to oh, baseball God. trivia. Now we're going to kind of mix it up a little bit here. Um, instead of doing an A, B, C, and D, and we want you to participate out there, uh, this is actually going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a who am I, oh. and this is taken from baseball's best 1,000. So it's uh, one through 1,000. They rank players, um, you know, from stats to Hall of Fame and to different accomplishments. Um, but, um, well, I'll, at the end, I'll tell you who the player is and what their rank is in this book. And can it's funny I because – yes. Michael, one question. When was this book published? So I can have a time frame on this. So this is a current book. Okay. The, the thing, the thing I noticed about this was I actually had to kind of fact check it because sometimes they'll put a, a stat out there, which I'm like, is that, it, it, could he be the only person that did that? And I'm like, I um, look it up and it's like, sometimes um, the little stuff passes you by. Like I, I'm just like, we were talking about Jim Bunning. Like yeah. you go, Oh, Nolan Ryan did it after right. that. You right. know, so then they say he's the first. So you have to kind of define actually what right. it is. At that time, he was, but I was exactly. Like, I was adding yeah. to what uh, Nolan did later. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's start out with this. I was traded as a minor leaguer from Detroit on August twelfth, nineteen eighty-seven. He was traded to a team. I have two hundred and thirteen career wins as a pitcher. I won the Cy Young Award in 1996, posting a 24 and 8 record, 294 EA, ERA, and 276 strikeouts. I switched from the bullpen and uh, I switched to the bullpen and led the NL in saves in 2002 with 55. I am second on the list of most postseason wins with 15. Who am I? And uh, like Kevin, Kevin seems Maybe to know it. So, it. but but I'm going to go to Angelo and please yeah. in the comments. Uh, please put out who you think this player is. <clears throat> oh, man. Switch to the bullpen and led the end out and saves in 2002. Second on the list. Let's see. Mm. Cy Young in 96. Traded from Detroit. So he was a double A minor league player yeah. at the time. The, the Detroit Trade thing is not going to help you out very much. No, it won't. It won't. The thing that if it's who I think it is, the bullpen was the thing that made me figure it out. Believe it or not. Because mm. there's a the guy who obviously I'm looked. To, he I'm went to 28 and 96 and he went to the bullpen. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know who it is because I can think of a great pitcher who, who did both. The last I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of a great starter that got converted to the bullpen. So Jack Durango says Tom Berenger. No, oh, you're so close. <laughs> he, he, was, he was the catcher. He you should have said Ricky Vaughn. Ricky Vaughn would, would have been closer answer to that. All right. If Kevin Kevin feels like he knows the answer, then let, let's 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 get Kevin taking that. I'm waiting to see. T I can hear Top Gun Talwar screaming the answer out. To Bubble, Bubble Bug has no clue, but Kevin, yeah. The reason why I, I figured this out is um, because I'm like, wait, when I read the thing about the bullpen, I realized, oh, that's right. When this certain pitcher came up, he was on, he was a Detroit prospect and he went to the Braves. That'd be John Smoltz. There you go. That's it. So well, I didn't get it, a chance to say it and you fucked up because like, ah, yeah, Kevin knows this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And he's listed as uh, 410. 
Um, Hall of Fame, uh, Baseball Hall of Fame in 2015, uh, first ballot, 82 percent. Um, was with the Braves, uh, but I forget that he was with the Red Sox uh, for just that that one year. Yeah, the Cardinals the same season. Wow. Well, I went I went to uh, Petco Park and saw his first uh, start because um, they actually needed him to start, and he struck out I think the first like seven batters. Oh my god! Of his, of his Cardinal career. That's, wow, that's the end of his career too. Yeah, he yeah, he was still really was dominant really that year. That's, the bullpen was why I figured it out. So I was like, who was awesome in the nineties? When I saw the bullpen, I'm like, oh yeah, it's got to be John Smoltz. Yeah, he like he yeah. went to the bullpen and like like um he went from like fifty five, he had forty four, and then he, I, and, uh, yeah, I didn't like, realize he, he had that many saves. I forgot he got like almost within 50. like a three year span. He had like almost a hundred saves, oh, and then crazy. then that year after zero. Oh. So like he he actually he must have got hurt or fell off he or something. Like that. But he, he had probably, a nice he had a nice run as a reliever. Oh my gosh, for sure. All right. Um, how, so how, how was that? Was that, was that different, but still that was challenging? Awesome. Yeah, that okay. was awesome. Okay. So let's, let's do it again. All right. I hit 300 or better nine times in my career. I am an 11 time all-star and 84 Olympian. I am a 12 time all-star. Actually, I don't think it's an, an, I am an, uh, I'm a 12 time all-star and stole 40 bases in 88. 51 in 1995 and 379 in my career. I was the NL MVP in 95, okay. World Series champion in 90, three time gold glove winner. In 96, I am the first shortstop to hit 30 home runs and steal 30 bases. Kevin seems very confident. Angelo is uh, shaking it. his head. Yeah. It took well, me a minute. Sure, I got I'm, it. I'm shaking my head at Kevin's uh, <laughs> enthusiasm. <laughs> So he, like, so but, but, here is here's a bit of the secret. I would have got it from one clue. Which which clue? Oh, well, I think the one that probably would have been a dead giveaway was the NL MVP in '95. Hey, so I don't I don't know all the MVPs, but if he was a World Series champion in '90, mm. I figure out who the champions are in '90, and and who was the shortstop for the '90. World Series champions. Yeah, that's a good point. It jumped out to me, and I'm like, okay, who was on that team? And then I saw the World Series champion. I'm like, okay, maybe. And then I saw something else. Like, okay, I know who it is. Yeah. I don't want to say that the key. The, the key thing. Do I dare say what it is? Yeah, go for it. Is position. That's the key. Because look so at sorry. shortstop and twelve time All Star. You know, it pretty much gives it away. Because this guy. Pretty much every year was voted All Star for a long time. I don't know how much he was the starter, but he was the starting shortstop for years. Ozzy Smith said about him uh, when he, he became the first thirty thirty uh, guy that he, that the torch has been passed. Yeah, to a new like a new yeah, era like, of shortstop. It, it, let me verify that. Post Ozzy Smith, I do need to clarify that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, that that ninety six is the year that that Ozzy Smith uh, actually Royce Clayton took over for him at short. Tony La Russa came in and put it, right. took Royce him out of lineup. Clayton, too. Yeah. I forgot about thirty thirty. Yeah, and I believe he is. Am I allowed to say he's a Hall of Famer? I'm like, I am correct, right? He is. He is yeah. a Hall of Famer. He is. Do you want? Do you want to? Do you know who it is, Angela? From yeah, even, uh, I do now after the the tail end of the conversations. Okay, All right, we're here to help you. Go, go, Barry, go. Barry Larkin. There you That's go. It. Colin yeah. Duncan oh. got it. I and uh, University of Michigan. I was going to ask you if he, it, yeah he was a Michigan guy. Um, yeah. I just I just found out the Sklar brothers, uh, the comedy duo, went to University of Michigan. Oh I, wow wow! I <laughs> and, uh, and and and, uh, and the Steiner brothers. <laughs> that, of course, of course. And uh, Michael Mondragon tried to look like a Steiner brother once about that. So that so in our videos, uh, Kevin and I go to watch uh, college baseball at Dodger Stadium, and then we go to a brewery afterwards. And uh, I recount when my friend and I dressed up as the Steiner brothers to go to a WWF uh, show at that time, yep. and uh, we actually got called out by Bobby Heenan. So that's um, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, huge thrill for me as a, as a oh, as yeah. a wrestling fan. Yeah. Um, Definitely. And uh, Jack Durango says, uh, call, uh, Chad M killing it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chad so is this, a stud. 
So, um, and he was number 106. So, wow. you know, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to throw in some more of these. It, it, it kind of gives a variation on kind of like yeah. the uh, ABCD. It, mm -hmm. it requires a little bit more thought. Um, yes. But yeah, it's like, it's overwhelming at first because you're taking in a lot of, um, a lot of information, but yeah, yeah. It, it's like, like I just grab on on one thing and then you, you, you can get it. That's why I kind of have to like be a little bit, I, I can't, like given if I would have given away Cincinnati Reds in it, yeah, yeah. you can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah. that would have kind of given. You have to make a pick, like World Series champion. Now I'm like, okay, that's the Reds, and I'm, and I'm like, okay. When I saw shorts, I'm like, oh, duh, it's Barry Larkin, of course. You know. Yeah. So uh, two people it in our comments got it too. So that's that great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that is the show that we have for you tonight. Uh, thank you, and please like and subscribe. Uh, mm -hmm. We're on Twitter, Facebook. Instagram. And uh, of course, uh, hopefully you're watching on YouTube. Please give us a subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand followers. Um, we we'll hope to uh, do it in, in this century. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, so please help us out. We're only trying to get to a thousand. Uh, that'll help us uh, meet our goals. So uh, just tell a friend and um, have them log in and just give us a subscribe and, and uh, we'll entertain you every Tuesday night. Uh, Angela Trinidad, do you have anything that you wanted to plug? Hey, thank you guys for tuning in as always. Um, uh, definitely, this is uh, one of the highlights of the week. But uh, if you guys get an opportunity, um, I will be guest hosting uh, the All Angels podcast this upcoming Sunday with the friend wow. of the show, uh, Daniel Garcia. Nice. Uh, so make sure you guys tune in uh, on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast to check that out. Um, but uh, appreciate you guys' support. Let's get it. Let's get us to a thousand. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get there soon. Yeah. And we're almost at a thousand on our Instagram as well. So, uh, we're going to start, uh, I've kind of slacked off a little bit and doing that kind of stuff, just putting all of our effort into this, uh, YouTube channel and a lot of this show. Um, and, uh, Colin Duncan says, uh, thank you, Angelo, Michael, and Kevin have a great rest of the week. Uh, have a great rest of the week to you too, Colin. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Chad M, uh, thank you for all the cards, and this has made it really great. Um, and um, and uh, All Angels Podcast, you know, checking in. Yeah, yeah. so that's where you'll be. Uh, you know what? Um, we'll, we'll actually give a link uh, to the uh, to the uh, Halo Haven and All Angels Podcast, so we definitely make sure to catch you. Kevin, do you have anything? Um, I know that you probably want to mention Terry Cannon again. Um, <laughs> yeah, come on. Well, I missed that top of the show, but um, – if anybody's interested no, but, in the uh, history of baseball, baseballrelicquery.org gives information on that. Um, for myself, if you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Lock and Lull. That's L O K N L O L L. Otherwise, every week I get my beer now from Red Beard's Tap Room in Anaheim. If you live in that neighborhood in Anaheim, I, it's walking to the Angel Stadium. Hopefully, when baseball comes back or hockey comes back. It's walking distance. They have 40 crap beers on draft all the time. Good spot to go. They're open six days a week, and they got an outside patio in case you want to have something there, take something to go. Otherwise, support your local brewery. Support, support minor league baseball. I, I always like to say more than even major league baseball. It's going to stick around, but we want these minor league teams to stick around. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, and I will be on Carvers and Creators. If you look on YouTube, Carvers Creators. Uh, that's where we're at. Uh, we're looking for the support for that channel. Um, and uh, we will not see you at the brewery. We won't see you at the ballpark, but we will see you next Tuesday, same place, same time, uh, talking about uh, craft beer and baseball. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good night.